Okay, we're on the campus. Uh, hi. <laughs> University of Leipzig campus, and I we walked up. We're here for the Bach Fest, but we saw um, this uh, encampment occupation is what we would call it. And I didn't know there was one uh, in Germany. We we uh, see a lot of police action against uh, these kinds of things. So let me know who you are and what what you're about here. Um, we are a big group of students um, at the University of Leipzig and uh, we decided to make this camp. We were inspired by camps in the US and other camps here in Europe um, and we decided to do this to be visible to the people around and especially to the university. Um, we also submitted a list of demands to the university. Um, Tell me a little bit about the demands. Okay, um, we demanded that the university um, um, admit uh, that uh, Israel is in occupation since 75 years and this is uh, not something new, uh, that the Palestinian oppression is not something new and it's not something that only started on the 7th of October. Um, and we also asked the university to, um, to um, stop its uh, relationships with the Israeli universities because they are directly researching um, weapons and weapon production. Um, so it's, it's basically we demanded that the university ha um, have an academic boycott against ah. Israel. Mm. Exactly. Yeah, we also demanded for like it's called a task force for Palestinian students because when the war in Ukraine started, there was a task force created for that. But obviously, due to racism, that didn't happen when like the genocide was even more intensified mm. in Gaza. So we're also calling for that to have like psychological help and other kinds of stuff. Now, what kind of reaction did you get? I would say mostly really positive reactions. A lot of people are coming here and are super happy that this camp is here, that there's a place where we can talk about Palestine and Palestinian liberation. A lot of people said that it's like a really important space for them also to like collectively get together to discuss, to, to you can create come in and talk. Um, <laughs> things. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I've, uh, we've seen in America, we've seen a lot of, uh, uh, like the police will shut down the demonstrations here in Germany Part, Partly understandable because of uh, the history from World War II against the Jews and stuff. So if it's seen as anything anti-semitic people, you know um, What how, how would you address that? I mean, it, it is kind of like for me as a Jew. It's it's a really hard process to reflect because um, uh, sort of, uh, you know, these same crimes of racism, homophobia and just general um, feeling apartheid, feeling unsafe and in, a, in your own camp with so many people, it's, it's perpetrated by the same people that you know, the, the police just came here and it's, it's like they're well known in Leipzig to be very right wing and they're perpetrated by the same people uh, that did this to my family or still do it to Palestinians or people around the world and um, and we just want to make society sort of conscious that you know it still exists and it's getting worse like the situation around the world is tensing and it's it's really important to like, just come because then we see that like people know that like this is like the right cause and though we have like a soccer game right now and like many football games but people like still flock to our camp after the football game so oh, it's that's really nice great. to see great to hear. Uh, you wanna anything else to say or you wanna show me a little bit about what <laughs> okay. I am not a student. I cannot speak too much English uh, but I understand you. Very good, very good, thank you. Uh, you wanna show me a little bit? Yeah, Quick walk around, around and I'll just walk behind you. And so if people come down here, uh, come down to visit, they can just walk in and there's some information here. What is HGW? We are, we are in a public park. Huh? Um, ah, okay. And so anyone who's welcome here, um, we even here have an info info stand over there. I see. Where people could collect flyers, some um, some other information. Meat, exactly, some, some, some information from other sources uh, other than German sources. Ah, um, okay. Because sadly, the German sources have not been reporting um, the whole truth. Ah. Um, some things have been left out and some things have been modified. Uh -huh. um, I could I could listen to a quick example right sure. now. And usually what you hear about in yeah. CNN or in, in yes. German media, yep. they say that 
instead of saying that 15 Palestinians were killed by an Israeli bomb yeah. in Gaza, they would say that the Palestinians died in a bombing. Yeah, uh, they sounded exactly. like so, they exactly. sound. So, they make it sound like something right. abstract, like right. um, like something that just happened, and it's no one's fault. Is but there a good the uh, news source that is more um, objective, more um, fair? I would say if. Um, I would not like to recommend any specific news source right. because I cannot guarantee that any specific mm -hmm. news source exactly. is non-biased. Yeah. But what I would like to say is that if, if someone would like to inform himself more about Palestine, yeah. you could always um, use Twitter or Instagram to follow the people directly in Gaza. That's, that's what to, made a difference. People with these exactly. shooting. Yeah. Exactly. Um, before we needed the news more to know what's happening, but now exactly. we have social media. Now we can see directly, directly. the people who are being affected. We can see yeah. directly their daily lives. We can see how they get food. We can see how they move around. We can see how they get bombed. We right. can see how they pull bodies out of the rubble. Exactly. And I think if we could see all of this, it makes only little sense to listen to someone's opinion in America or in exactly. Germany. Yeah, we um, call it guerrilla video by the people on the... Exactly, yeah, exactly. Terrific. And um, also social media all around the world, um, out of the Western nations, out of Europe and out of the US and Canada and Australia. Um, news, news networks in Russia, for example, RT or Al Jazeera in Qatar yeah. or Arabia and Saudi Arabia. Um, and many, like, these, are, these are the ones I see regularly. Um, aside from the Western media, but this is this, they show more of the truth than the West does. It's very Perfect. important, I think, to also have a very diff different view and every source you look at. I mean, if it's not, for example, coming from direct sources like from first hand information, to look at it with a critical viewpoint and make exactly. sure that all information is sort of soaked in so that you can sort of make your own opinion. And of course, a lot of people don't really want to and it's, it's a really hard process but I think we're you know fighting we're still remaining in solidarity and we will never stop because like until the people of Palestine are free perfect thank you so much uh, any last words before I should we still show you around sure 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 I'll just what you follow you here is the HGV actually okay. like officially it's called HGV which is Hochschule für Grafik und um, Buchdruck and they change it to Hochschule uh, gegen Genozid und Waffenlieferung, so uh, University against Genocide and um, Weapon Delivery. Weapon delivery. Ah. Yeah, and it used to be um, exactly in the university, in the art university, yeah. but due to also Zionist propaganda against ah. them, they had to move out of there, and now they're also part of our camp and are doing really important work. Terrific. And, yes, what you can also see here, the info can be already. So this is near the entry. If you come in, you'll yes. come to this place. And exactly. Then also okay. we have this really beautiful apartment wall. Yeah, no, that's really good. It's like an ongoing process, like the revolution. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't know if people know the relevance of the apartheid wall, but... Um, um, I'm sorry, I I'm okay. But, um, <laughs> but walls like this yeah. are actually much, Let's much go higher. Look up. Let's go look at it a little bit. Um, walls like this um, are to be found everywhere around Gaza and the West Bank. Ah. Palestinian villages are surrounded by walls like this. Ah. And they use these walls to create checkpoints. And if, I, We've seen, yeah, exactly. big walls. Exactly. Like, and if yeah. Palestinians want to move from one Palestinian village to another in the West Bank, or if they want to um, go to work yeah. um, inside of Israel, um, they, they go through the checkpoints. They point. have to go through the checkpoints and they have to get it's permission. It's like the old South Africa apartheid with the Bantustan. Exactly, and, uh, yeah. exactly. And, and these, these walls have a purpose of protecting the settle Israeli settlements in the West Bank, the illegal Israeli settlements in the West Bank from the Palestinians. Um, and what I, actually, what I actually think they're doing is they're just constricting the freedom of the Palestinians inside their own land. Um, they have no freedom to visit any neighboring Palestinian yeah, villages. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, that's Thank. why we created a, create a small road. It's them. very nice. And this is done by the people here. Every, anybody can... Uh, yeah. It's like people's artwork and expression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We also had like children drawing on that. That was... Ah, uh, terrific. Yeah. Hey. And then what okay. we have over here is like the tents and the everything. Act, so people are actually here. occupying the area by by living here. Yeah, like the Occupy movement. I was part of that. We have around 40 know. tents now. 40 oh, tents. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's terrific. And I have some stills of this too, so I'll put that. Hey, thank you guys very much.